Hello, my name is Mike Emery and I'm the Site Administrator of the Cornwall Iron Furnace. Today I'm going to make a video uh, because we can't do our Christmas at Cornwall event this year. And last year when we did the event, one of the things that we did is that we decorated the inside of the visitor center with decorations that we had at the site, but also a lot of things that were brought in from uh, different staff members and, and, and volunteers' homes. So one of the things that I brought in last year uh, was uh, Santa Clauses that I had carved uh, from the time that I was a young teenager uh, up until uh, pretty pretty recently. Uh, that's the one thing is that uh, you know carving has been something I've done for a long time but it was something that I would do for a while put away then come back to it. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do a small uh, carving project of a Santa Claus. Uh, Probably I know uh, many of you have never carved before, so I'm going to try to do it step by step, show as many of the, uh, the ways in which to do this, and also to tr try to do it with as few uh, specialty tools as possible. So here's an example of some of the, the carvings that I've done in the past few years. Uh, the project that we're going to work on is uh, this Santa Claus here. It's uh, not quite four inches tall. It's about an inch and a quarter wide. Uh, it was made out of a piece of one by stock, so uh, front to back it's uh, three quarters of an inch uh, deep. So it's a very nice uh, early uh, <laughs> project for someone to work on. Uh, I know my first Santa Clauses that I did, and those were some of the first things that I did when I was, again, a, a real young teenager, were about the size. and. Uh, and it took me a, a long time to do, but you know I was at the time very satisfied with the results. You know, during 2020, of course, though I've had some additional time uh, to make uh, some other uh, carvings. And behind me are a few that I did this year. Uh, so this is uh, one that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, it's it's taller, made out of a thicker piece of stock, more detail uh, because the larger size allows you to it, and also. Uh, the arms on this one spin uh, somewhat like a whirly gig, so it gives it a little bit of of action, uh, which is nice. Uh, this is something that my children have enjoyed for a long time, and they've always enjoyed the ones that you can go ahead and, and swing the arms. Uh, I also made a larger uh, version of that this year as well. Uh, again, something that you know, takes a little bit more time. And of course, these are made out of multiple pieces of wood, as opposed to the project we're going to work on. Uh, which is just a single piece of wood. So that's probably the best place to start is actually to talk about wood and wood choices. So most of the time what I have used for my carvings are just off falls out of the wood shop. So I've uh, done woodworking uh, in and around my home, uh, make small projects. It's something that I learned from my father and I had a great uncle who also did carving. Uh, so it was something that I've always uh, kind of been interested in. So the most uh, prevalent wood that I have in my shop are all falls of pieces of pine. So this is a, a piece of uh, one by stock. This is actually a piece of, of barn board. Uh, so you can see that there's a center groove. Uh, there's also uh, this piece here to be able to take a tongue. So uh, these are our barn board all falls in which I've just gone and I've actually uh, drawn on a basic shape. You can see that it looks somewhat like a blunt arrow. And the reason why I've done that is I'm going to use a bandsaw uh, to be able to cut this out. So if you don't have to use a, uh, a bandsaw at home, uh, if you get a piece of wood about this size, uh, you're actually able to go ahead and carve that out. This just saves on time. And if you don't have an electric bandsaw, uh, you can also use a, a handsaw to do this. Uh, since it is a, a rather thin piece of pine, it cuts relatively easily. So it is something that you can use hand tools on. Uh, but one of the things that you want to really look at is when choosing a piece of wood, uh, the grain uh, is very important. So here's a piece of uh, what's called a five quarter. Uh, so it would be inch and a quarter, which is actually a good full inch plus. And you'll notice that there are knots in this wood. And anywhere where there's a knot, the grain is going to go in different directions. It's going to be much harder to cut around these areas. And the knot itself is actually much denser than the wood that surrounds it. So 
just do yourself a favor when laying out a project is try to find a piece of wood in which the growth rings so you know the annual rings are fairly tight together uh, if they are uh, far apart that tends to be wood that's not going to be real stable uh, and also something that's as free of knots as possible but even out of a piece like this there's plenty of good wood for a small project so that's why I've, I've held on to something like this in the shop uh, and here's another board. Uh, this is a, a, actually the piece that this came off of. And uh, here is a really nice piece of barn siding. Again, relatively close uh, growth rings. Uh, but there are some problems. You can see that there's a crack uh, here. So there's an area here that we'd want to avoid. Uh, there's also a fairly large uh, knot that comes into the wood. So this is an area that we want to avoid. So we want to go ahead and place that in an area that's relatively free. So let's go ahead after you've drawn this on. Again, uh, this is about the size uh, that we need. And then we'll take this to the bandsaw and uh, cut this out and uh, get going. Now with my safety goggles on, I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, the saw. I'm just going to guide this slowly around what we cut. Doing a relief cut. Moving my fingers, just in case. And a relief cut. And there we have it. We have a, a pretty good close uh, cut to the lines. And again, it doesn't have to be real exact. We're just trying to get away as much material uh, to save on some of our knife work. Now that we have the shape cut out using the bandsaw, we're ready to do some additional shaping. And now, uh, what we're going to actually use is a knife. So this is a carving knife that I use. It's uh, by the Warren uh, Cutlery Tool Company. Uh, it's a uh, really a plastic handle uh, with, uh, with brass uh, that holds in blades uh, that you can buy from them. They're already pretty sharpened and uh, it fits very nicely in your hand. And that's really one of the most important things with any carving knife since you're going to be using it a lot. It needs to fit well in your hand. If it's too large, if it's too small and it's uncomfortable, it's just not going to be as good a time. And you also are going to go ahead and have problems uh, because if it is uncomfortable, that's really when you start to cut yourself. Uh, so, you know, using as much safety as possible, what we're going to do is we're going to take this shape which is you know very square on the edges and the first step really is just to go ahead and to work that down so most of the time when you see people whittle they carve away from themselves with a lot of wood carving you're actually going to cut towards yourself so the motion that you're going to see 
is a motion where I'm going to be bringing the knife to my thumb but short of my thumb and uh, all we do is we just start working away and you can see I'm not pulling it without uh, without control this is very controlled cuts uh, that are coming towards me so we want to do that as controlled as possible you'll have to change from side to side and one of the other things that you'll have to get to know is what the grain of the wood is going to dictate uh, because that's going to be how you work a piece of wood is really how the grain is going so on this piece I read pretty quickly that the grain is going to allow me to do that so here we have you know already a a real basic shape uh, starting to take form doesn't take long to, to take those corners off so we'll do kind of the same front and back uh, where we're going to remove those corners and again just switching from side to side taking a little bit off at a time uh, you'll see some wood chips come off of this pretty quickly The other nice thing is, is try to find a wood, uh, and this pine does a pretty good job where when the knife comes through, you already get a fairly smooth surface. Uh, that's going to be fairly important. Uh, the smoother the surface, uh, the less finish work you'll have to do later on. So right now I'm just trying to get that basic shape of the Santa Claus, really working uh, this head area uh, for him doesn't take real long. After we get through this, we'll then draw on some detail and some feature on this one. You can see I took a little much off there, so it actually did a little splitting, but all you do is go back and take those splits out with the knife. So you start to then feel how the wood is going to allow you to go. Now the technique that I was just using is called chip carving where you come down in one direction, go to the other, remove the chip. And sometimes that could be done just by uh, using your blade and the cutting motion, though sometimes you actually then would use the tip of the knife to go ahead and to put a line in. We'll do that uh, particularly when we're defining uh, the edge of the beard. Now after working the, uh, the Santa Claus form for a few minutes, we see that we've gotten a real uh, nice true form of the Santa Claus with its head, his arms coming down, and of course the rest of his robe. But the area that's his face is, is very uh, blank. Uh, we just have kind of a, a flat area there. So really one of the next things that we'll have to do is to go ahead and to define what the face looks like and also a little bit more with the arms. 
So you saw that I did everything fairly free form before this, but now uh, is when it will get a little bit more exacting. Uh, you have to do a little bit of planning because it's very easy uh, if you just started to whittle on this that the face would be off to one side or another, uh, it would be too high or too low. Uh, so you'll have to go ahead and define the features. And I found the easiest thing to do with that is to actually go ahead and to use a pencil and to go ahead and start to draw those features on and that way then you have lines uh, to cut to and to cut away from. So that's really what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and to lay out uh, the Santa Claus. Uh, really the face, the beard, the mustache, the arms, the hands, you know all those detail uh, pieces that will be on here I'll go ahead and I'll lay those out with just some real basic uh, lines. Uh, so Next time you see this, it will have a little bit of, of that on it as well. Now we've laid out the Santa Claus's face and also around its beard and his hands. So these are all just you know, approximations, uh, but they do give us a nice outline of where we want to be on the piece of wood. Again, it's, it's very quick that if you go ahead and when they're this small, one or two cuts of the blade can really mean a lot. So you want to make sure that this is laid out as, as much as possible. So really one of the first things we're going to do is that you can see where the beard is located is also where the arms are located. So we're going to define that space between the beard and the arms. And since we have this already out in our pencil, this is where we're going to use the very tip of the blade of the knife. So you want a knife that has a very good sharp defined tip. Uh, some people if they, they whittle will go ahead and use a rounded edge knife. Uh, for this application that really doesn't work nearly as well. Uh, you want something that has a very defined square or even uh, a tip that rakes out like this knife. So what I'm going to really basically do is I'm just going to go ahead and follow the lines at the very bottom of the beard uh, to where that meets with the arm. And I'm just going to follow that line and just take my time. So, and you don't have to get it all at once. So just go ahead and continue to push down. I'm pushing down to get another layer down in that same line until we have a nice deep cut. Probably something you can't see, but what I've done now is I've really cut between uh, the, this upper portion and lower portion so that when I carve I have a real defined line. So now I'm going to do the same for the other side. And again I'm just going to follow that pencil line and if the pencil line isn't exactly where it should be you know that your knife can only make so sharp of a turn. So oftentimes if there's a too sharp of a turn with the pencil you can correct that at this point. So I'm just taking about three passes to each one of those. I'm also going to define the end of the sleeves where it comes in uh, to the mitten. So those are just two straight lines. So at that same point, so this point where the beard meets the arms is really important that that's centered in the piece and exactly where you want it to be because that seems to be where a lot of the detail work is coming off of. So a couple of lines here. We're not going through nearly as much material so probably only two will do it for now. And same thing for the other side. Just a couple of cuts to make sure that that's well defined. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove away part of the arm. So we're going to go down in and we're going to push that and just a little at a time so you push it down remove the chip and you keep increasing the depth of the angle so at first you do kind of a real shallow angle then you push it down a little more and kind of keep pushing so we want to define that area but we're not going to do all the definition on the arm. Part of that's also going to be with the beard. 
So we'll go back at a, another point and do that. So let's do the same thing. Oh, let's clean this up a little first. Get those chips out. Always makes it a little easier if the chips are removed. And it'll take you a while to, to get the feel of the wood. Every wood's going to have a slightly different feel, even if it's the same species. And it will tell you where it can allow you to go, how deep and how fast. And it doesn't do you any good to try to fight the wood. The wood's going to tell you what you're able to do. So you can see pretty quickly we got some definition between where the beard and the arms are located. Now in some places some people would stop right there, sand it up and there we go. But I like to have it a little bit more carved. I know some of my earliest Santas uh, it was really just the hint of carving with things like that and a lot of the detail work I did with paint uh, because that was my skill level. So I'm going to though take it a little bit further of course. Uh, we're going to end up doing a lot more on this. And also you can see the arms right now look very kind of unnatural. Uh, they look very square. Uh, so at a point we'll also take those down a little bit so that it looks more natural. Like your arm folded across your front. I'm just going to do a little of that work right now. Again, that's going to tell us then a little bit about what we have to do with the beard. So again, just getting further definition. Yes. Again, when we take a chip out, and there's a little left over, just cut a little deeper, and we can remove that chip pretty easily. And now I'm at a pretty steep angle. I'm cutting more and more down into the piece as opposed to cutting across it at this point because depth is what I want to get again to give more depth in the carving so. alright so let's go ahead and try to free these hands and arms a little bit so we did that cut but what we also need to do is we need to, to taper from about midway to those hands. So I want to put another relieving cut here to define where we need to stop. Otherwise you can very easily take a knife up through there and split that off. So that kind of stops your blade when you have one of those cuts. So now I have kind of this triangular shaped cut here in the center. And very easily you can see I can go up to that cut without breaking anything out. So and then just remove the chips. And we'll have to do more refining of that, but that at least is a real easy way to go ahead and stop the piece from breaking on you when you're bringing your knife up to meet it. See, very quickly then we've been able to define where the hands and the arm are. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a little off here so it looks like more of a taper at the moment. And we'll have to clean that up a little later. You can see this isn't a hardwood, but yet at the same time, the knife doesn't go through it exactly like butter either. 
So you have to just figure out what that correct pressure is so that the piece doesn't break under your knife. And also, of course, that all-important thing, when the chip's going to give so that when you're pulling the knife towards your hand, you don't cut yourself. This is another place to watch, again, with your blade, how I have my hand here with my finger up against it. I'm being very gentle, but also being very cognizant of where the end of that blade is uh, because it's very easy to cut yourself doing that. I know in my early days of carving, uh, it was pretty common for me to cut myself, so uh, there was always a little extra red, it seemed like, in every one of these Santa Clauses. A little bit of a little bit of paint, a little bit of blood, but try to be as careful as you can. Alright, so we have that now. The body's shaped much nicer now. So let's go back up and look here at the space uh, between the beard and also just for my working that a little bit I've worn off some of my pencil so I need some of these lines back here much more defined so what I'm doing here is defining the mustache again a mustache is a, is a pretty important thing on these because that allows you to define pretty well between the beard and the face it's a nice transition point if you didn't do that, say if you had to do a human face without the beard and everything, it's much more difficult. So that's the one nice thing about doing a Santa Claus figure is, is that there's a lot of detail that gets hidden by that beard uh, and then the mustache, so that, that kind of helps you out. So now we're just going to do a little bit of rounding of that beard. So this has a square corner, you know, so we're going to just take off some of that squared edge. So be real cognizant of where the end of your blade is. This is a little bit more delicate work here than some of the other. Because if it's too long, you cut into the arms. Too short, you could chip it out. So you just want to be... Take this slow. Don't need to be fast. So that already makes the beard look so much nicer, having more round to it, because that's the one thing is that we as people, there's not a lot of straight, a lot of round, and that's all we're trying to do is give that a, that illusion that things are, are raised higher than they probably are. So right there's where we sit. So I'm going to go and just redo some of my lines uh, before we proceed. And then when we come back, we're going to work on uh, more of the face and the mustache. Uh, and this is a little finer work, so you're going to do a lot of work here with just the very end of the knife. So now I've, I went and just did a little bit of reworking of the face with the pencil. Again, just so I have a better guide on where uh, I want my knife to be. Because there's a lot of small detail here. So you can pretty quickly uh, cut over in the wrong place if you don't have this well laid out. And really the most important thing is that you'll want to have a real strong center line here. Uh, at least mentally and with several points that you're hitting. Uh, the tip of the beard, the bottom of the mustache, the nose, and... Uh, so that the face is, is on the center of the piece as opposed to off to one side, which is very easy to do. So we're going to grab our knife again. I'm going to go back to the face. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to cut just like we did before. Just take the very tip of the blade and we're going to define that space between uh, the clothing and the face. So I'm just really taking my time, taking it around just a little bit at a time, and we're going to meet back where the uh, the beard comes in. So we're going to have this complete line now that, that defines that. So I'm probably just going to do that one more time. And we'll have to do this in parts 
but again this is a place where we don't want things to chip out so we want a nice deep relief cut and again just let your blade go inside of that last pass so that we have a nice sharp delineated area around there now we're going to do the same thing uh, for the mustache uh, the brow and the nose so I'm going to start here with the mustache so I'm just going to go at the very kind of tip of the nose and put one cut in that way and then a second cut as well and if it isn't a hundred percent even at this point that's not a huge issue uh, that can be dealt with in a later step again I'm just making sure no area here for this to chip out so I'm just working to make sure those ends go into one another so I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of the mustache so kind of starting in that center line and drawing that bottom line to meet that tip you see I'm reversing this then so I don't overcut to kind of meet that tip on that end so depending on whether you're right or left handed at times you also have to start and end in different locations just because it seems very awkward but again just kind of a nice easy motion takes you over there I can see that I'm not quite even on that one but again I can I can deal with that at a later date so now I'm cutting across the brow reversing the knife again so I don't overcut it and I can use the groove kind of put my knife in and then I'm also going to score on either side of the nose just to bring that down so that that's defined so that doesn't get chipped out so so here it's now all lined with the knife so what we're just going to do now is go back in do some cuts down to it and again we have to be very gentle at this point because things can chip pretty easily and this though really gives it some depth you can see then I go back and cut it the other direction with that line doing the chip carving it's a real delicate spot so I want to take my time Sometimes it's just hard to get it in your hand at a spot where you can be nice and comfortable. See there, I just went a little bit faster than I wanted to. But still, because of the having that, that line for the chip carving, the blade stopped where I wanted it to. It didn't take any more. And that's very important that you have that stop line, or else I would have just taken off that part of the mustache. So that's why we do this, this chip carving method of cutting and then taking the chip off. All right, so let's define the face now. So we just did a little bit under the mustache. Now I'm just going to go inside of the hood. So I'm cutting in where the face is located. And I'm just going to take away little bits here and there. And in this, I'm going to have to go the opposite way of the grain, but you're just going a very small area. Just a little bit. So you just continue. Kind of do that cut. Of 
And by doing that other cut, you then also start to define the cheeks. So by cutting down towards the mustache, and then here I'm going to go next to the nose. All right. Just very little at a time. Very gentle. Gentle as you can. And the more time you take with this, the less the less you'll uh, make mistakes, but also the less finishing you'll have to do in the end. Because there's lots of little edges here. Lots of places to to make mistakes. So you just take your time. And if you make a mistake, that's all right too. Uh, this is all a learning thing, and you know things are handmade, have little issues with them. So right now I'm just defining that area between the hood and the forehead. You can see that again if I didn't have those cuts there this would chip out very very quickly. So it's very important to take that step and define all those lines with the knife's edge first. And if you get down to a point where it's starting to break, that means you need to define it just a little deeper. Having a really good task light is also something, and uh, if you need glasses to do fine work, uh, the better the better vision you have, the better off you'll be with this. Uh, I know when I was much younger I had much better eyesight, and but the flip side is is that my technique wasn't as good. So uh, what I produce now I think is better quality. It just in some respects takes me a little more time to do it because I have to be more careful because of my eyesight. Still very good but just not like what I was when I was young and I need more light in order to do it. So here it is roughed out. Uh, when we come back, I'll have that a little bit more refined. Just keep going over it and then do some more rounding. Our next step is that we're going to further define the face. I've, I've given it a fair amount of definition, but we really have to work now on the nose. So we'll do a little of that work. We'll also round out and separate the mustache. And also we have to do a little bit more work on the hands. Uh, we have to define those and, uh, and separate them from the sleeves. But first we're going to work up here on the face. So we have to separate the nose from the mustache. So again, that's just a simple line uh, between the nose and the mustache. Now we're going to leave the nose alone. Again, that's a very small piece. So we're actually going to work first on the mustache and give that a little bit around. So that's just a couple of small cuts very gently and as you take it to the surface then take it down but I also want to make sure that the mustache is split right in the bottom center of where the nose is located so we want to put in a pretty good line there because that's what we're going to have to work off of so that's what I'm doing right now just making sure that that split is equitable on the face. And then also do it on the side where the beard is located. <laughs> yeah. 
And if you need to, you can get in a little deeper now on the beard side. Make sure that split looks natural. And again, this is a <coughs> excuse me, a Santa Claus figure. So you know, big bushy beard, big oversized mustache that just kind of lends to the look. Now I think we've separated that. I think we just do a little bit of rounding. So that's again very gentle work. Edge of the knife. I'm going in the opposite direction for the bottom side because that's how the grain wants to go. I'm doing it pretty slow. Okay, pull those chips out if they have them. So there's his mustache. We'll have to go back in at a finishing stage and take more of that out. But now we also want to work on the nose. So this nose now is separated from the mustache. Now I'm just going to lean the, the knife over. A little cut. Take a piece off. Same thing on the other side. Lean it over. Take just a little cut. And just kind of keep doing that till we have a fairly defined nose. And again, we'd cut those lines in there earlier, so that's what we're using as a guide. And again, it's pretty quick that you can get little chips here. So you just kind of have to keep clearing those out. Otherwise, it's it pretty muddy to see where things are located. clean up here. And we'll come back and do a little more work on that nose closer to the end. Again, we just want to get it nicely defined. It's a very small nose, so you have to be very careful with it. If we're getting there, though. So, there we are. So we have our face uh, pretty well defined on it. So let's go back down to where the gloves are located. Let's define those. So again, we'd already cut a line here and a line here, and we already did the one down below. So we need to do that definition. So we'll come back in and kind of cut toward those lines. And we want to be deeper in board than closer to the bottom. So we'll spend a little bit more time cutting that and we'll go back in where our cut was and remove those make sure they remove pretty decent and then we'll do the same thing here we we'll to make sure that that gets cut down pretty nicely okay so that defines that out from the arm pretty quickly that way and we're making it look like he has one kind of mittened hand over the other so we're really just defining one of them but we still need to define where it comes out of the sleeve on both sides okay so there's this kind of rounded mittens already again just a couple of knife cuts in there we can clean that up this is still pretty square, so I want to round that down. By doing that, I'll probably have to do some more definition on that side. Yes. So, there we are. So, the gloves are pretty defined. The face is now fairly defined. Uh, we'll just have to do ahead and work on how the arms go because again we want those to kind of fluidly move from a from a, a, an ill-defined shoulder uh, down to the front and not have such an angular cut on like this side. So let's turn this around 
We just kind of want to get rid of this hump. Again, with a good sharp knife, that does not take long to do that work. And this one here needs a little more definition. I also don't like areas where I can still see the surface of the board, so I want to make sure all that's taken off and that we're fairly rounded on the edge. So I'm just going to work on that for a moment, making sure that all that material is kind of taken off. And some of the last work that I usually do on a Santa Claus, just because if you mess up on the face, <laughs> you don't want to have a whole lot of time in the rest of the body. Just what you need to have it done. So, real shallow cuts with this because it's more for aesthetics than anything else. The definitions happen. Of course, this is also the back. So, I'm just taking real shallow cuts just to make sure that's all gone. doesn't take much now you could do a lot of other things with a Santa Claus like this like with some of the others I've put belts on them if you wanted to you probably wouldn't see a belt on the front but you could very easily put one on the back cut to it and then that would give you more definition as well so sometimes I like to do that because it's just a way of giving more definition to the Santa Claus and also just improving the look the other thing we have to do is the head is very pointy on this one. I like them a little bit more rounded, again, to make it look a little more natural. So I'll take this point off, get it a little bit more rounded, and then some rest of that could be taken care of with just a little bit of sandpaper. So that's another preference, is just how, how do you want to finish your Santa Claus? Do you want it to look like... I just carved it and, and set it down and put some paint on it. Do you want it natural? Uh, or do you want it to look as, as kind of finished as possible? And in that case, you might go ahead then and use uh, a sandpaper and sand everything to round. And years ago, I did a lot of that. But I think people want to know that it's carved. So sometimes I'll make sure that I leave some of the carved marks on so at least people can see and get that look. So, so here we are, we're fairly finished. Uh, I know one thing that I'll do is I'll go back over and just kind of work to make sure that the face is as good as it is. The other thing that you'll notice with this guy is that there are lines in it. So you can leave it the way that it is. Uh, you can go ahead and put those lines in with a knife, but that's pretty difficult. But there's a V-shaped chisel known as a veining tool that's a lot easier to use and the other nice thing is with this carving set is that those uh, small chisels you can actually get to fit with inside of of this so again it's a real versatile kind of starting out tool uh, but it does does a, a good work so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup work here and then bring it back so you can see what it's like to use uh, that veining tool to be able to put in the, the lines in the beard Now I've taken my handle and uh, removed uh, the blade and I've put in a, a veining tool. And again, this veining tool is V-shaped, so it's not like a rounded chisel. It actually comes down to a point and it's so that you could put, you know, like veins and leaves, I believe is where the name came from. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that to put lines to define the beard so oftentimes what I do is I do very short cuts up close to the mustache and then I'll take those and I'll go down towards the bottom. So I'm going to start just by taking, and again, very little amount of pressure and cutting lines in. And they don't have to be big. They don't have to be deep. Uh, and later on you can always go back in and deepen them a little bit and we're being very careful that we don't go and split so oftentimes these leave just a little bit of a tail up next to your cut line so I'll go back in with the edge of the tool and actually just remove that chip as we're working 
Uh, it's, I find it a lot easier than trying to remember where all these chips are. So just a little, little line. I'm doing maybe about a quarter to a half inch line at first. But not real big, pretty small. So I've started those out, so then I'll turn it and I'll take some of those lines and I'll extend them the entire way down the beard. And some of these I'll take off in a direction, not down to the end, especially the ones on the side. Uh, you can design that however you'd like, that's just my preference. But this gives a nice detail to that beard. And especially if you're going to do painting. And I like to use an antiquing method that those grooves really then take, uh, take that antiquing material uh, very nicely. So again, it all depends on what your finish, uh, what you want that to be like. So... Just extending those lines down to the very bottom. And they'll split a little bit, but that's fine. And you want this to kind of look a little uneven. Santa Claus, I don't think, is known for his real, real kept beard. So we can accentuate some of those lines, keep some of them shallow. And that way it gives this whole idea and illusion of depth. And if one's a little bit too big, you can add a smaller line in there as well. Again, that's kind of just have to take how the design comes and use the design of the wood to be your guide. And down at the end where it comes in next to the arms, I'll try to cut those just a little deeper so that they seem to go down. But you have to be careful that the tool doesn't cut into the arms itself. So I'm just doing that at the very end. Just giving a little bit of a push so that that doesn't go in and damage those arms while I'm doing it. So, you know, in a pretty quick time, you know, we were able to take and add those lines uh, again into the beard. So really, uh, our next step that we're going to have to do here is uh, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of, uh, particularly up around the face, that's again where all those lines come together, you oftentimes have issues and just a little bit of general sanding up around the head to get rid of this pointedness uh, and uh, where these lines are cut on the arms that's always an area that seems to do it so uh, I tend to use um, you know, sandpaper that isn't uh, like a medium grit sandpaper because uh, we're not going for real fine finish uh, and yet that will take some of those things away so uh, let me just go ahead and I have a piece of sandpaper here now so just quick sanding of the top doesn't take much you know I'm not using a sander because that take away way too much material we're just trying to get the rough off take those those edges that would have some issues and, and deal with those so trying to get those areas first and and I want to leave again that's my preference to leave a fair number of the knife marks on the work so that people can still see that this was a hand done piece and not something that uh, was done with machinery. See, and pretty quickly, since this is a softer wood, uh, you know, those high spots come off. And those areas on the back, you can now, it actually even defines that, I think, a little bit better. Because uh, this helps to kind of burnish uh, the wood if you're using a, a grit uh, that's a little finer. Again, getting in around these hands, around the arms, those areas where we came together. And pretty quickly, all of those little ripped pieces of wood, you know, get taken off. So that's... That's nice. 
because that's something that's always, I think, very distracting in your finish when you see these little torn pieces of wood. So finishing, of course, is one of those things where it could take you five minutes or it could take you days, depending on your project. But certainly, every minute that you spend in the finishing phase usually is well worth it for your outcome of your piece, whether it's a piece of furniture or even a carving. So, But it all depends on your taste. If you want something to look a little bit more primitive, that's, that's fine. You can do that as well. But also being careful when you're doing the carving that you don't have a lot left to the very end. Uh, that was a mistake I did as a as someone who started out carving. I would just make sure that it was all done to the end, and by that time I would be too impatient and I would leave things that today I just wouldn't leave. I would I would have taken those out. So again, that's something that just comes with time, and every once in a while you see something. So. Here I have a, another knife that isn't quite as sharp, but that works fine because that's a nice tip to get in and take out some of those areas that are a little broken. So that's what I'm doing right now, especially in around the face. Like I said, where those lines come together, you're always going to have little pieces. And this drags them off. I even have dental equipment. Dental picks work very nicely for that, but... Uh, that's something you don't have. Uh, years ago that was something you could pick up at just about any flea market. You'd find inexpensive dental picks and uh, that's what I always used them for was for woodworking. It just you could get into places that otherwise you just couldn't get into. So now of course before you do some painting you also want to wipe this down with a rag take off as much dust. If you're really picky about it they do sell uh, tack cloth. Uh, it has uh, like a cheesecloth that's impregnated with a resin and uh, that works very nicely to take and remove all of your sand or your sawdust after your sanding. Uh, with doing a larger project, particularly those in which you're going to put something like a polyurethane on, that's a that's a real good way of doing it. But I think here we are uh, as a friend of mine said, the enemy of the good is the excellent. So I think we'll just stop right there. And uh, here's our finished car of Santa Claus. And uh, the next step we'll go ahead and do is uh, get some paint and uh, and do that. And uh, I always use some fairly inexpensive paints. You'll see what I, I use. They're just inexpensive craft paints. Uh, but then the antiquing that I put over top really makes those look like a rich oil. So the next step that you'll see is when we're prepping uh, to go ahead and to get this painted. Now that we've done just a little bit more finish work to the Santa Claus done and uh, just taken a little bit more sandpaper over it, uh, we've gone and taken our rag and again, you know, wiped it of any and all uh, dust and sawdust that's on here, particularly from using uh, the sandpaper, we're going to go ahead and do some painting. So again, I, I said that we, uh, typically what I do is I use a, a very inexpensive craft paint. Uh, so uh, colors we're using uh, will be a, a white, uh, we use a, a red, um, black for the gloves, and uh, and this is a camel for a, for a skin tone. So those are really, uh, again, real basic color palette. And typically what I do is I start with the white uh, because if you're going to get a little bit of that white paint over anything else, uh, it's better to start with that as a ground and then kind of work your way out. So I have just a little, small piece of wood here uh, that I have as a palette. A little bit of water as well. And the palette not only serves as a place to put your paint, but it's also a place to take paint off of your brush. Because sometimes you get just a little bit too much. So, here you can see I'm just starting uh, up near the mustache. So it doesn't really matter uh, where you begin uh, as long as you can get it on there. So, 
just a little bit at a time. Uh, this is a very uh, quick drying paint. So the nice thing is, is you can get multiple layers. So if you don't feel that you've got enough on the first try, it doesn't take real long that you can go back and put a second or even a third uh, layer of paint on. Um, using not the uh, a small brush, but not the smallest, uh, to be able to go ahead and to put that paint on. And again, I want to make sure you get really down into the grooves so you don't have to come back do it again. But there's always some touch-up that you have to do. That's just inevitable. Uh, but again, just trying to get in all the grooves and get that, that white paint done. And we'll need some white paint then also for some details. Uh, usually I like to give the eyebrows or if there's in a forehead a little bit of, of hair. Uh, so we just want to go ahead and again get that, that largest area with the white paint. Making sure we get in good and deep so there's not an area that doesn't have paint on it and then all we have to do with the red is to go up and to match that Again, just making sure that we have in there. Again, I've overpainted that primarily so that we don't have an area where there's there isn't any paint. So we'll just go ahead and let that dry for a moment or two. Won't take too too long uh, to be able to do. And I'm also going to go ahead and just wash out my brush in a little bit of water and use the rag take out the remainder of that paint go back in and rush wash the brush again and then get the rest of the water and if there's any pigment out left in the brush it does not take much okay that's about all the drying time it takes. I can see it's a little bit wet, but we'll go on to the next one anyway, which is the skin tone. And we'll start at the top of the head and work our way down. So we just need a very, very little bit of that. But since we're in an area that's a little bit finer, I like to use a, a very fine brush at least to get the edges. Again, this is a, a very small brush just a few hairs but very easy then to get in and to get this area around the face particularly around the edge and that's the area also where we did all of that relief cutting around the face so this way you're able to get a nice amount of paint very deep and on that so if we have several layers that will be that'll work out nicely and we can then go back over it with a little larger brush and this will also allow us to get right next to 
paper we just painted the white and the underside of the nose Okay, so now we've gotten just about everywhere where that would come into contact with something else as far as another color. So, I've done that. Go ahead and take that brush, put it in the water, take the rest of that paint. Now I can really go and, and put that on make sure that it's a good coat of this kind of light brown again what's called camel uh, but you can use whatever skin tone you have and I'm taking these right out of the bottle of course you could always mix these as well if you have other colors or choose to make another color And making sure that we get all of those detailed areas. And you can start before it looked a little washed out, but at least by putting a little paint on, you start to see that definition from the carving come back in. And again, this dries very quickly, so you have to work pretty quickly and if you don't like the way that it looks, it's not quite enough. Just to wait a couple of minutes, it will dry, and you can go on with another, another layer. And I think that has it for now. So I'm going to put that in the water, let that set, and uh, set him down for a moment. Make sure I have my brushes good and cleaned out. And doesn't take real long, but I want to do that between each color and certainly each piece so your brushes remain good and serviceable. All right, so I think the next one that we'll go with is our red. Of course, that's the color that we'll use the most of, that has the most surface, uh, because we're going to do the entire robes out of red. So, we can start in and around the face, the hands, because those are the areas where we have this border area. So, we can use a pretty fine brush or if you don't have that, you can use something a little bit bigger and just do a little bit more touch up. But for now, I'm getting the edges of things because oftentimes that's where the issues will crop up and that you don't quite get an edge the way that you thought you did and then you'll see this bare wood shining through. And then you try to get in there and that's usually where you can kind of start to mess things up. So again, this stage you don't have to be real, real careful. And where we've gone with the white, we'll probably have to go over that again. Uh, oftentimes with these, particularly with the reds, you might have to do them twice. Again, depending on what look you want to go for. Uh, I tend to 
like it to be pretty dark. So I may have to go over it twice. So we'll, we'll see. I'm going to try to do it with a nice even stroke. That certainly helps. So I'm just trying to get that area between the red and the white and make sure that's a good line. It's almost like painting in a room or a house. I'm doing the cutting in first and then afterwards we'll do the larger amount. It all depends how good and how steady a hand you are. You may have to do that a little differently. I'm doing up around the face and the hood. You want to make sure though you don't get it with too distinct of a line where the red's going to go. You kind of want to feather that in every once in a while. Otherwise that'll come out in the process as well. So there we go. We're getting around that top. I'm going to get just inside of that hood just a little bit. That's when this brush really works well. You have a lot of control over where it goes. And again, you mess up, wait until it dries real fast, and put on the other layer and just do a little touch up. Doesn't take that long. Nothing to get too upset about. Okay, I think we have around the hood now nicely enough. Just giving that hint that that's red inside. So let's do around the other side of the beard. Make sure our Santa Claus looks respectable. Just a little at a time. Again, kind of taking our time up through there. But you don't have to be too, too careful. Again, a beard is going to be rough. And depending on how you want, you may want a rougher edge anyway. Let me just follow where we were with that white of the beard. So there we have it, pretty close. Where it goes wrong. So, okay. That looks pretty good. So again, we'll go ahead and let that, that one rest in the water. And let's use a larger brush so we can apply more paint. Now we'll go pretty fast. That was fairly tedious. Now we just have to be careful about where we were so we don't hit that white beard with the red paint. 
And I'm going to do the upper part of the Santa Claus because that's just where we were with wet paint. And that will give me the lower section to hang on to for now. So I may have to put him down for a second or two uh, to let him dry after we're done. But again, that's where a quick drying paint, relatively light coats of paint also help. Uh, where it gives you a little bit of time where you can do that. And if you even wanted to use a larger brush, a, a fan brush or something, so one thing you do have to watch is that I'm blending uh, strokes with this so you don't have one area that has looks real heavy and another area next to it that's real light. So I'm, I'm typically when doing these larger areas, just like again doing woodwork uh, in a house, uh, painting with the grain, but that's not necessary. It's just the way that I typically will do it. So he's starting to come along pretty well now. And get those areas where we did all those relief cuts here in the arms. That's a nice deep area. Make sure that's well covered. And that might be a spot also where you have a little unevenness. So we want to make sure that gets a good amount of paint on it. Again, just making sure we take all those brush strokes out. Because when we do the antiquing, any and all those brush strokes will be a little accentuated, which maybe that's a look you want. And if there is an area where you didn't quite get, since this is a real dr quick drying paint, they'll typically show up as a wet streak on it, so that's where you know where you want to go back and do a little bit more work. And again, I'm using red. Uh, if you look at old postcards, you could use a blue or a green. Uh, I've even seen purple. So the paint is where you can really do a lot of different things and, and make them look different. I know in my collection of ones I've done over the years, I have some that are blue, I have some that are green. I've certainly kept a fair amount of my Santa Clauses natural. Uh, with this one, like I said, I use pine. In the past, I've carved out of walnut, uh, carved out of uh, out of eastern red cedar, uh, even all falls from different things that I found. Uh, I think I've carved out of yew and a few other things that are a little bit more exotic. Uh, things that I found different areas that uh, the piece of wood kind of caught my eye and thought, oh, that would that would make a good Santa Claus and uh, start doing it. So I have some made out of several different woods and, and left natural and some painted. So again it all just depends on the look you want to go for. I'm starting to run out of room to hold this guy. 
Now the top of the head is starting to get dry already. I don't want to press my luck. So I may go ahead and give him a minute or two to dry before I go on to the next color. So and maybe I will press my luck. There we go. One of the other things I always do uh, when I make one of these is I always at least put my initials on the bottom uh, to sign it. And also the year. Uh, my early ones I didn't put the year on. I really regret that because then I have to rely on my memory. Which isn't the best when you do a lot of things like this. So many of them I have dated but not all of them so it's just a, a nice way of knowing when you did it and look back um, particularly if you do a number of them that way you know kinda of what style you're doing at what point I have to just get a little bit more paint not a lot but just a little more start with that and see if that's enough I've applied a second coat of the, the red paint and it's it's just about dry. They're just some of the areas that are in uh, close to the detail work that are just a little bit tacky. But I'm going to proceed. So the next thing we're going to do is, is address uh, the gloves. I don't need a lot of paint so I'm actually just going to take this from the inside of the container. And since we have an area it's fairly tight I'm going to go in with that smallest brush again and just put that in. The area that I'm dealing with isn't all that large. So even though I'm only putting on a little at a time, sometimes a smaller brush allows you that detail. And then I hopefully won't have to do it a second time or touch it up, though. That happens. That's not the worst thing to ever happen. You know, this is one of those times I was probably just a little too neat. A little bit of overlap of the colors is always nice when you're doing this detail work because then you don't have to get in quite as tight with the brush. But I got it. It's just a little easier sometimes with your initial colors if you're actually a little sloppier. So again, it's like the gloves or the, the mittens are folded over one another. So you can kind of get away with just carving one. And it gives you the illusion of kind of clasp hands. So, anyway, there we are. Uh, the mittens now uh, nice. And we'll have to go back because I want to use that brush again. So I can put the lid back on on that paint container 
and if my white that I first put out for the beard is still good I can go back into that and I just want to add just a little bit more detail uh, this time to the face and uh, if you want to you can always give them eyes but one thing I do definitely like to give them is eyebrows uh, it really that white really kind of stands out so you can do that as a straight line you can do that as a bunch of dashes that's also if, uh, if the face isn't quite what you wanted as far as it being um, centered you can do a little bit of centering by adding the eyebrows to kind of the center of the piece and since they highlight everything it's kind of a way that you can trick the eye So there we go. Just gave him a pair of pretty simple eyebrows. Now I'm going to give him a little tuft of hair uh, to stick out. So I just have to be careful of that black paint. But right there at the edge, I'm going to give him just a little tuft of hair sticking out from underneath his hood of his robes. Just enough to give that illusion or that idea that he has just a little hair there. And that doesn't have to be real even. So there we go. So I think, for the most part, that has our Santa Claus painted complete. You can still see the hands are a little damp, so we're going to let that go. Uh, we have his eyebrows on, we have his hair, his beard is there. Uh, the red is completely done. Uh, oh! one more thing that I do like to add to these uh, of course Santa Claus is out it is always a little damp and a little cold so I like to give him a little red to his cheeks a little color so you can do that with just a straight red or you can mix a little white with it get a little pink and uh, just add those to the tops of the cheeks oh, just need a little bit more red paint to be able to do that just a little drop is all I need not much you just barely need any to be able to do that so just a little red I'll take just a little of my white on the palette here mix them together I get a little pink and a little exuberant there and get that right color Okay, there's a, a good pink. My brush is just a little messy, so wipe that extra off. So go back in. Add just a little bit of pink, a little rosiness to the cheek. And again, you can do all kinds of things here. You could add eyes to them. You could do all kinds of different detail but I think that's pretty decent I, I think that that gets us where we need to be so I'm gonna set that aside let him dry clean up some brushes and then we'll do some of our final uh, pieces on this which is the uh, the antiquing now our Santa Claus is dry uh, so it's no longer uh, tacky at all to the touch it's, it's completely dry and we absolutely need it to be dry in order to go ahead and do uh, the antiquing process. So what I've used for years for that is actually brown shoe polish. Uh, it has to be a shoe polish uh, that is a, a wax base as opposed to an oil base. Uh, so Kiwi Brown is what I've used for, for many years. And uh, an old toothbrush, a little bit of the brown shoe polish, and this is going to hurt the first time you do it that you have a nice newly painted piece because it's going to look fairly ugly uh, after you uh, put the polish on it. So I use the, the, sh the toothbrush primarily because of all of those deep areas because when a piece is old typically 
where it is uh, has the deepest crevices is where the most dirt is and that's kind of what we want to replicate that this is a piece that has lots and lots of dirt on it. it's been handled by a lot of hands over its its time period even though we just made it we want this to look like it's been around for a number of years so I'm just gently going over it uh, again putting all that in here at the mustache and uh, some of these other points uh, you could see that it <laughs> got pretty dark pretty fast uh, the other place that I really want to hit is this area where we have uh, the arms uh, where that's been put so we're going to go ahead and make that pretty deep uh, get that in uh, those areas that have uh, those real crevices so let's go ahead and run that on and, and just like brushing your teeth you want to hit every spot that you can as well as you can and uh, you know, try to make it fairly even so his face now looks uh, fairly brown the white has gone it's no longer white uh, so you're going to get a little messy doing this uh, I'm just rubbing it in and it's going to find every nook and cranny and crevice that you had here so just kind of going over it and over it and over it making sure that we get all of the surface now just like with shoes when you go ahead and you put a wax on it at first it's very very dull uh, all you see is the color but in order to get that shine that you want with a pair of shoes you have to buff it so after we go ahead and now that we have all the surfaces and you can see uh, it's it's completely covered with this brown uh, the face everything so what we're then going to do uh, after this dries a little bit is buff it off so you just use uh, a cotton rag uh, you can see I've used this one quite a bit for other projects and you just start to rub it and uh, kind of the more you rub it and just like a pair of shoes uh, the wax will start to buff and it starts to come up to a shine and that's what we're looking at doing we're going to buff that up to a shine and what that's going to replicate is you know all those years of being handled and all that dirt and grime going into those areas but it's also going to make these very inexpensive water-based craft paints look like an oil uh, but you didn't have to go through all the process of doing it and uh, I've only done a few of these in oils and, and uh, after doing that I wasn't as intrigued in doing them in oil anymore because you'd have to let it set and dry to be able to do all these processes so in order to finish a piece it just took so much longer nothing wrong with it just you just know that going in with it so if you want something that has the look but don't necessarily want to have the time the effort and the cleanup you know you saw how fast I was able to clean brushes because this again was this uh, real inexpensive water-based paint uh, it really took no time at all so you can just continue with this and rub it and keep rubbing it and keep buffing it as much as you want to get the finish that you want and the other thing that that seems to do from my standpoint is that it really accentuates all of the knife marks that you put into the piece so you can really tell uh, that this was something that was done by hand as opposed to something that was made by a machine so there we are uh, after just a couple minutes of, of putting on that uh, shoe polish and then buffing that up uh, we have a, a very nice example uh, of a Santa Claus so let's look at the piece that I did a few years ago you can see that I did a, a slightly different uh, technique that was on this one used a little bit of a 
of a, a lesser amount, so it's it's much whiter the beard. This is a little more yellow, uh, but you can see uh, they both come out very nice. Uh, all of the detail uh, is really accentuated by that extra layer of kind of supposed dirt that's in there from uh, the shoe polish. So it just gives it a, to me a little bit more of a dimension, and you're able to uh, to make an antique or at least something antique looking uh, pretty quickly. So I thank you very much for, uh, for watching this video on, on how to, uh, to carve a, a Santa Claus. Uh, and I hope that uh, someday that you'll be able to come and see our event at Cornwall Iron Furnace again, uh, our Christmas at Cornwall. Uh, so go ahead and please uh, look for uh, other videos uh, that we put out for our talks and, and for some other events. And... Uh, certainly look at uh, all the things that we're doing uh, coming up. So you can visit us on Facebook, you can visit us at our website cornwallironfurnace.org uh, and also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, which has our other videos. So thank you very much and uh, hope that you enjoyed this and hope that you got some instruction out of it. So goodbye.